Robert the Reaper Whitaker. He's an Australian mixed martial artist who is the former UFC middleweight champion of the world. His original gym had a base in Hapkido, and as Whitaker began fighting, he used his striking skills and knockout power to lead him to victory. But to keep the fight in striking range, he also developed wrestling skills to deal with the takedown threats of the high-level wrestlers he would face in his rise to the middleweight crown. In recent years, he's even competed to become the Australian Freestyle Wrestling Champion, where he was selected to represent Australia in the Commonwealth Games before having to withdraw due to UFC commitments. And in this study, we will examine some of the takedown defense or anti-wrestling techniques he has used to keep the fight standing. And we'll begin by briefly going over some of the more common defenses before later covering the more interesting recent developments in his game. The first of these techniques is if an opponent enters into a clinching range, then Whitaker will use an arm to post off their head or shoulders, which will help to create a frame or barrier to prevent the opponent from getting chest-to-chest -chest contact and securing a strong gripping position. This can also be seen as a double-handed shove to the opponent's chest. And next up is the sprawl for when his opponents take a shot at his hips. Whitaker will drop his legs and hips backwards, and also of note is his use of strong down blocking with his hands, which shoot directly towards the mat to prevent his opponents from establishing their grips and also helping with Whitaker securing his own underhooks. If the opponents do manage to get in on a single leg, then Whitaker will look to escape by limp legging. This is where he posts on the opponent's head and turns away from them while lifting his leg up and out of their grip. This is a move that works exceptionally well in MMA, where there are no wrestling boots to hold onto and provide extra grip. Now we'll move on to war walking, or in this case, more generally, how Whitaker will help use the fence to stand back up. If taken down, he can scramble towards the fence and use an overhook to first help lift a knee off the mat before he can then begin to stand on his other leg. All the while, the fence provides a barrier to prevent his opponents from completing the takedown. He will then look to escape from the clinch against the fence, which we'll now look at in this next section. So if an opponent does manage to drive Whitaker against the fence, he will usually capture an overhook with one arm and then grip fight with his free hand to prevent his opponent's hands from locking together. He then uses that free hand to help assist in the escape. He will also turn his hips perpendicular to the fence and split his stance wide, which further helps in preventing his opponents being able to lock their hands together for the double leg takedown. And here he's even removed his overhook so that he can use two hands on one in preventing his opponent's grips. If his opponents are working for an upper body clinch, then Whitaker will use his underhooks and overhooks to help turn the opponent off the fence. One interesting thing of note is that when Whitaker removes his overhook, he will bring it directly over the opponent's shoulder and down so that it briefly moves into a collar tie position before breaking away, which helps Whitaker prevent his opponents from being able to close the distance again as he exits the clinch. When exiting out of the clinch against the fence, Whitaker will do so by switching his hips strongly in one angle and then circling away from the opponent. If Whitaker has an overhook, then he'll tend to circle out on his underhook side, but he'll even perform this technique with double underhooks, and in which case he still prefers to circle out to his right hand side when he exits the clinch. After switching his hips, circling out of the clinch, and then away from the fence, he can resume his striking attack in the center of the cage. And perhaps the most interesting part of Whitaker's game is his use of the turtle position, where he will give up back exposure to his opponent so that he can build his base and work back towards his feet, where he can begin to fight his opponent's grips. He will even move towards the fence first before giving up his back to stand up in a position that Estonian grappler Preet Mikkelsen has dubbed the active turtle. If his opponents do manage to capture the rear clinch on him, one of his main tactics is to pummel with his elbows by digging it in between their arms so that he can then turn to face his opponent. 
He will use his elbows to help regain control of the inside space around his body when he's in the middle of the cage, or also when he's against the fence after having stood up from active turtle. And here we'll see Robert Whittaker chain some wrestling defense together, first looking to sit out before attempting to hit a wrestler's switch, and then deciding to walk towards the fence before sitting down into active turtle position. Active turtle can be characterized as having one knee flat on the mat with the same side's hand posted straight up and the other legs begun to stand up and that side's arm has its elbow attached to the hip. The elbow position helps seal off access to his body and he can use it to pummel in for an underhook of his own to regain control of the inside space which he can then use to exit out of the clinch. Giving up this back exposure in turtle and active turtle is inherently risky for rear naked chokes, but we can see here against Jacare, Whittaker was able to remove his hook and stand up before shaking him off his back. We can see how he did it here by kicking his right leg back and bringing it up to meet his elbow to continue sealing off his body. Whittaker will always look to stand up against the fence with the outside leg first. This leaves the inside leg with its knee on the mat. This allows Whittaker to use his elbow to seal off and prevent the hook being inserted on the near side, and then the fence acts as a barrier to prevent the hook being inserted on the far side. Then once standing, it's a matter of breaking the grips of the opponent so he can pummel to the inside and then exit out of that clinch position to resume his striking contest. Here's one more example of Whittaker using his elbow to pummel to the inside, which Romero tries to stop with two-on-one inside wrist control, which leads me to show you the time that Whittaker was able to stop Jack Array's takedown attempt with inside wrist control of his own on Jack Array's left arm. Coming from a nation that isn't considered globally to have a strong wrestling scene, Whitaker has done exceptionally well to develop a wrestling base that has enabled him to fend off opponents in the UFC that have far greater competition wrestling experience. And it's important to note that he's done this while continuing to train within Australia, where the common recommendation would have been to go overseas and join a mega gym that has more experience in the area. And for that, I find it truly admirable what he's been able to achieve. By becoming Australia's first UFC champion, he set the benchmark that future Australian mixed martial artists can aspire to. And since he dropped the title, I've personally been very impressed in seeing him out competing very frequently at the local Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu tournaments available around Sydney. While there's a lot to learn from studying Robert Whittaker's technical game, there's also a lot to learn from how he carried himself as a champion. And that concludes this study on Robert Whittaker's anti-wrestling takedown defense. I hope you learned something from it, and if you did, please like and comment on the video down below, and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more like it. Also, check out my website at sunnybrown.net and join my mailing list. Thank you.